The Innu are indigenous people of northern North America. Uh, until the 1950s and 1960s, they were permanent migratory hunters of the Labrador Quebec Peninsula. So they led a way of life that was mobile, that was dependent on the animals and hunting them. And by all accounts, they were incredibly successful occupants of what, what is one of the most demanding habitats on the planet. In my view, the, the forced settlement of the Innu in the 1950s and the 1960s is the most significant fact pertinent to their history and also to their future. After they were drawn off the land and into settlements, the Canadian government embarked on a very aggressive assimilation campaign. And that included things, for a brief period of time anyway, of criminalizing their way of life, which is criminalizing the hunting of caribou. Very quickly and not surprisingly, uh, things went horribly wrong. Inu people fell into alcoholism, drug abuse, suicide rates were very high, and the change in diet has since then precipitated a massive epidemic of, of diabetes. So in one generation, they went from having a very healthy wild food diet to a very unhealthy junk food diet. I got involved with the Inu through being commissioned to do a human rights report. That human rights report was in collaboration with Survival International. And what I was trying to do through several visits back and forth to Northern Labrador was to document the connection between the policies of forced assimilation and the social suffering in, in the communities, but also particularly the human rights implications of the removal of the Innu from the land and how that had impacted their health and well-being. I would say that from the first time that I visited uh, one of the Innu communities in 1994 and stayed with them, stayed in a house of a family, I felt an immediate bond, I felt an immediate rapport, I felt that I liked them uh, as people, I think they liked me. And over the years, I developed lifelong friendships with Innu people. And because of their situation, because of the suffering that I could see all around me in the communities, I realized that my research couldn't be an arm's length kind of sociological study. My research had to be with them, uh, not on them. And that's how I proceeded. I've always, I've always felt that it was actually immoral to be arm's length. After doing the Human Rights Report, I realized that it was important not to just document the, the, the suffering, but also to look at how that suffering could be addressed. And in my observation, Innu people, when they were on the land, when they were doing Innu things, they were doing land-based activities, they were healthier, they were happier, and they were not troubled by some of the issues that besieged them in the community. So I spent many years bypassing the villages and going straight to hunting camps in the interior of Labrador, staying with people, fishing, hunting, traveling, etc., and trying to sort of show that one of the most important determinants of health is the ability of a people to practice their own culture.